Hey guys! So, if you have code running in your browser, 9 times out of 10, it's JavaScript. For a long time, JavaScript was the only programming language that browsers could run on their own without an external extension. Of course, WebAssembly has changed that, but if you don't want to use WebAssembly and want to use a programming language that's not JavaScript, such as TypeScript, then you need a compiler that converts your TypeScript into JavaScript. A compiler is simply a program that converts code from one programming language to another programming language. In TypeScript's case, it compiles to JavaScript. Also, technically, the TypeScript compiler is a transpiler, since JavaScript isn't machine code, but the idea is the same. But you want to know something cool? The TypeScript compiler is written in... TypeScript! What? How? How can the compiler for TypeScript be written in TypeScript itself? Well, it's quite simple, really. New versions of TypeScript are compiled using old versions of TypeScript. This is called a self-hosting compiler, where a programming language's compiler is written in itself. And of course, self-hosting is not just limited to TypeScript. GCC, a well-known C compiler, is also self-hosting. Since GCC is for compiling standard, non-web applications, it compiles to assembly code, which is then assembled into an executable. And that also means that this is in no way a transpiler, unlike the TypeScript compiler. But what would it be like to create a simple self-hosting compiler for a simple programming language? Let's find out by writing a self-hosting compiler in brain f Brain f eh. Eh, I think it's kinda stupid that we keep bleeping the word brain f I mean, we all know that it has a swear in its name, and we have all heard that swear before at some point. And the bleeping hurts my ears more than just hearing the swear, so can we just say brain f without a bleep? You know what? Sure, turn the sensor machine off. Finally! <laughs> Dibs on the first one! Brain fuck! <laughs> what is brain fuck? I mean, I know what it is, but the audience might not. Brain fuck is an esoteric programming language that was designed in 1993 by Urban Mueller. Urban Mueller. The language's commands are simple. There is a tape with a pointer. The pointer can move left and right. You can add and subtract one from the current cell. You can accept input from the user, and you can print characters to the console. You can also loop until the cell under the pointer is zero. This is Turing complete because it simulates a Turing machine pretty much directly. Now let's make a self-hosting compiler. But first, what should the output of a BrainFuck compiler even look like? Well, it should output x64 assembly which is what NASM assembles to on Linux running on a 64-bit processor. There should be a block of memory declared as the array, and one of the general purpose registers, like R8, can be used as the pointer. In this example, there will be 4096 cells in the array, all of the cells will start as zero, and the pointer will start by pointing to the first one. The left and right arrows subtract and add one to the R8 register, moving the pointer left and right. Hold on! If I go left at zero, R8 underflows, and now it's pointing to invalid memory. That's a major problem. You're right. So we AND R8 with 4095 in hexadecimal to keep it in bounds. Now if you go left, instead of pointing to invalid memory, it points to 4095, a valid cell. And adding 1 to 4095 now brings you back to 0. Plus and minus are similar, but it adds and subtracts one from the cell pointed to by R8. These must be kept between 0 and 255 because BrainFuck limits each cell to one byte. So, a similar AND is performed on those with 255 in hexadecimal. Up next, input and output. These are both done by using similar syscalls. This block of code is quite long, so they can be turned into subroutines that are called in one line. And finally, loops. The loop will be treated as one thing, where the opening bracket generates the start of a loop, and the closing bracket generates the end. The start and end of loops are marked by labels. Since the loop is supposed to be skipped entirely if the current cell is zero at the start, the jump to the start appears before the end label. After the start label, we check if the current cell is zero using the compare instruction, followed by a jump if it is zero. But, hold on. You can only use each label name in assembly once. So if there's a lot of loops, they'd all need different names. How do you get those names? Foreshadowing. But yeah, that's how a BrainFuck compiler works. Now let's write it in BrainFuck. The first major hurdle to this is coming up with some way to do an if statement in BrainFuck, such as, for example, checking if the input is a plus. But the only condition we have is if the cell is or is not zero. 
The way I did if statements is with a structure like this. First, it subtracts the number we want from the input. In the case of the plus, that's 43. Then, we go over one cell and place one. Then, we go back to the input cell and enter a loop. This loop, if we enter it, subtracts one from that one that we just placed, and then goes back and destroys the input by subtracting it until it's zero, breaks the other loop. So, uh, why do we put that one there if we're just gonna immediately subtract from it? Well, we only subtract from it if the subtracting 43 from the input doesn't equal zero. When does subtracting 43 from the input equal zero? When the user typed a plus. So, if the input is a plus, that one is still there, and we can run a loop on it. This loop only runs when the input equals the desired value, which is an if statement. Oh, don't forget to subtract the one at the end to stop it from running again, otherwise it's a while loop. <laughs> Using this if statement pattern, plus some copies since it destroys the input, we can actually compute most of the compiler using these if statements and printing texts. Yeah, most compilers need a lexer and a parser, but since brainfuck commands are just one symbol, that's not really necessary. And also, even though this isn't exactly efficient, printing can be done with one cell of memory, and it looks exactly how you would expect. This is kind of tedious to do manually, so I made a generator for it. And since in-place printing doesn't need any loops, these generated prints can actually be compiled with a compiler now. So here's a kinda bad Hello World program, compiled using this compiler. But it still doesn't have loops, which are slightly more complicated. If you recall, loops require label names, but how do we pick the label names? Well. Let's have Seatail over here guess some label names. Okay, Seatail, how would you label these loops using numbers? Okay, this one is one, this one is two, and this one is three. Correct! Now try this one. So the first one is one again, and that one is two, but then it ends, so uh, this one's two as well? Seatail, that was very wrong! <laughs> the second one has to be unique, so and adding and subtracting counter just flat out doesn't work. But the closing brackets also need to know which ones they map to. The best way to represent this is a stack, where data goes in on top and comes out on top. Representing a stack in Brainfuck isn't too hard. The beginning is marked with 255, and everything on the stack has a value from 1 to 254. Oh god, oh no! I love cheesy proofs, you love cheesy proofs. To put something on the stack, we shift everything to the right and put it in the newly freed cell. To pop the stack, we remove that and shift everything back to the left. Wait, 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 wait. Why not just remove from the end of the stack and add to the end? What's with all the shifting? Because the shifting means that the top is in a constant place, Carl. But yeah, now we have a stack, and every time the opening bracket is called, we place a counter on the stack and increment the counter. We then print a label using the counter. Labels in assembly can be pretty long, so we just print a unary amount of A's. And that's the start label. This matches the end label, which is the same number of B's. The rest of this is just more printing, and the closing bracket follows similar logic. Now we have a fully functioning BrainFuck2 assembly compiler written in BrainFuck! Hooray! Now we can compile other programs! But can it compile itself? Well, let's try. can. But there still needs to be one final modification, and it gives an excuse for this brainfuck compiler to compile a new version of itself. The current version only supports up to 254 loops in a program, and this is due to brainfuck's cell limitations. A fix is just to represent the label with two cells, an X cell and an A cell, and increment X when the A cell overflows to keep the labels unique. After that, it can run much larger programs such as, for example, that game that I made in 2019. 
But anyway, that was a brainfuck to assembly compiler written in brainfuck. As a reminder, this channel has a Discord server if you want to join that, and you can also follow me on Blue Sky. Also, thank you to Tyler Zanke and all the other channel supporters, and I'll see you next time!